W's and L's, a weekly recap show where we give a dub to the things that we like and an L to the things that we don't. I'm going first. Got quite a few L's to give out. Me too. Mostly rap related. Oh. So hopefully I'm not stepping on your toes this week. I don't think so. Cool. First L goes to, well actually this should be a dub. So I'm going to give this L to Jack Harlow. So he just recently dropped an album. That boy took an L to MGK. Yeah. Yep. Recently dropped an album where he stated that he's like the the next next big white rapper to Eminem. First of all, who dubs themselves the next great white hope? Who does that? Who Jack Harlow. wants to be the great white hope? Jack Harlow. Like, fam, are, you can't <laughs> be that dense. You want to be that guy? Like, you want to be Vanilla Ice? That's who you want to be? I don't think Eminem wanted that. Eminem didn't want to be the next great white rapper. He did not, no. That's not something that you want. That That is a it's a novelty position. Why would you want that for yourself? You do not. Not, oh, I'm going to be the next best rapper. No, I'm going to be the next best white rapper. <laughs> it tells me it, he knows the game he's playing. Mm-hmm. Like he, he know he knows exactly what lane he occupies and how he is to occupy it. If I'm not mistaken, he said specifically that like he's been the next like white rapper after Eminem or whatever. Which is cap because there's been Mac Miller, who was way better than Jack Harlow. Boy, we will never see when you're acting, you usually step in it like that. Yeah. Because the last thing you wanna do, Jackie Boy is upset fans of the the real great white hope who never really wanted that moniker would never even allude to wanting to be the most popular white guy in rap like that's not that that's not it now you might end up being that eventually but to seek it out there's something there's something off about that to to wanting to be the dot of milk in the land full of cocoa that there's something (laughs) icky about that right like yeah. Sure. If that's what it is, that's what it is. But the longing to be the shining bit of snow in a land of cocoa is a little I don't I don't know if I like it. Well, first of all, like you already mentioned, it limits you because you're not going for the best rapper, you're going for the best white rapper. Second right. of all, who cares? Who gives a shit? Not a fucking soul of an actual rap fan. I white rap fans, I guess. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. He got that clout that he was looking for, though. But I got to give a dub out to Machine Gun Kelly. So or tearing that ass up. Well, first of all, he did a freestyle with Corday that was actually pretty dope. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Wasn't expecting this. I haven't liked Machine Gun Kelly since Wild Boy. I'm a wild boy. So, you know, it was nice to see him actually go back to rap a little bit. I mean, I know he's been doing his rock star thing, which, and marrying Megan Fox, I think. But yeah. then he came back and dissed Jack, and it was actually, it was some bars in there. So, you know. I'm, I'm glad somebody told Jack Carlo to sit the hell down somewhere. Yes. I agreed. didn't expect it to be MGK, but I guess I should have in retrospect. Sure. Sure. Jack Harlow was the, the was next up on MGK's white rapper hit list. No, facts. But you know what? I'm perfectly fine with it. If if this is how Machine Gun Kelly comes back up in rap, let it be to come back and slay Jack Harlow. Yeah. Perfectly yeah. fine with that. On to my next L involving rap. I don't know if you've seen some of the goings on on Twitter within the past week or so. One rapper topped the list. At least in black Twitter. That rapper's name is Freddie Gibbs. Recently, or somewhat recently, because I guess he's broke up with her. But recently, Freddie Gibbs had a girlfriend who was kind of like great value Amber Rose. Light skin, bald, all that shit. Like he was going around with her. Apparently, she was a star. And we know how niggas in the rap game are with star girlfriends. Love stars for some reason. Yeah, just love them. So it was a little weird to start off with, but they seemed to really like each other and it was all cool until we started seeing tweets this past week from Homegirl basically saying, well, I know you haven't seen me in a while blah, 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 on Freddie's social media or whatever, but basically 
Freddie was like sending her messages, being like all in love when they were in this relationship, which is really fucking weird. He was like love bombing her, kind of. Mm-hmm. And then she admitted to him that she was pregnant at some point in the relationship, and then he just fucking like ghosted her. Just dead in the whole thing. Pre- well, hold on. Pregnant with whose baby? His child. During all his love bombing and shit, he was basically telling her like he wanted to have a family with her and he wanted to have a kid with her and all this shit and I love you and all this all this weird shit. He even had one where he was like, I'm nothing without you. I'm just some I'm just some nigga without you and da 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 da. Like it was really weird coming from a forty year old. This is shit I would say to somebody when I was like fucking eighteen. He's pouring it on thick. It's, it seems to be his kid, and he just fucking ghosted her. And so now everybody is fucking pissed off at Freddie Gibbs for this great value Amber Rose. Now, I wanted to kind of fully give Freddie Gibbs the L until I heard Homegirl on Academics, little podcast or Twitch channel. She mm-hmm. kind of seems like a fucking goofball, too. She seems like she's kind of in this. Nice. In this for the clout. Apparently, she has continued her career while being pregnant. How you still he... working and you pregnant? Yeah. Yeah. And you're a prom star? Yep. How you brought a child into this world, especially after the whole Drake situation, I, I just want to understand, especially since you're 40 years old. Come on, bro. You You know better. You know better. I mean, I guess if Robert De Niro can have kids at 79. Who? Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro's having a kid? Robert De Niro's having his seventh kid at 79 years old. Dog, stop it. Robert De Niro is having a child with someone? 79 years old. Someone let Robert De Niro put his geriatric pickle inside of them and impregnate them? And it worked? Yes, bro. At 80? 79. He did that by mistake. He did not mean to do that. There's zero shot you want a newborn that you have to take care of at 80 years old. You didn't do that by choice. That was an accident. (laughs) He is dad to a 51-year-old, a 46-year-old, and 27, 25, and 11. And Uh, now he's about to have another one. Your child's oldest sibling could be their grandparent. (laughs) You like at, at, at some point, you just gotta you have to fucking stop. Like there, there, there's like no amount of money that should make you make those type of decisions. You, you know, God, God forbid, and you know, far be it on me to predict these kind of things. There's a high likelihood that like you won't be able to see your son graduate from high school. Why would you ever? Why would you ever? Why would you do something like that? Like I'm, 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 I'm looking at Nick sitting over here getting sensitive about people calling you a deadbeat. My boy, my boy. What, what would you expect people to say about you? Now all of a sudden, slowly but surely, the baby mamas ain't so happy as they was before. Surprise, surprise. Women are getting jealous when you spend time with the other women and their kids. Oh, nobody fucking saw that shit coming. Nobody. Nobody could have predicted that all these women that were fine a year ago are pissed off now because their kids are getting older and they're getting stressed by taking care of their ass and their dad is there for a month out of the year. One of the girls girls said that she enjoy seeing him play father to all these kids. Yeah, like she's she, a sick cookie. Like, she gets into She's it. a sick cookie. <laughs> Something wrong with her. <laughs> this is a woman who's willing to admit that freely to the public for everyone to hear. And Nick Cannon thought it was a good idea to have a baby with her. Just for the sake of having another kid. Because he don't want her. He just wanted a child with her. Because that's smart decision making, right? Even when you have the money to do it, it's smart decision making to have babies with any rando that'll have one with you and accept you not being there. Because that's the way to go. That's the smartest way to live your life. Yeah, seems just as smart as having a kid at 79. Like I'm not not judging 
based off of like a different lifestyle or it being taboo, I'm judging because it's nonsensical. It doesn't make sense. How many times you gonna wake your 80 year old ass up and change a diaper at three in the morning? Probably never. Sheesh. Somebody gonna be changing your diapers at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, let me have 10 kids spread out against seven or eight different women across the country because there's nothing that could possibly go wrong with any of that. I also don't know if you've seen everybody going crazy over this Chris Brown and Usher shit. Uh, I did. Chris Brown and Usher shit that we did not see? That seems to have never happened. Hold on. Usher supposedly got his nose split and his eye bruised over Tiana Taylor, but then they had a concert the very next day, and Usher's shit looks about clear as hell. So he even if they did fine. get into a fight, even if they did get into a fight over Tiana Taylor or what have you, nigga, it couldn't have been all of what y'all saying it is, because I'm looking at the man right now, 24 hours after you told me he got Jade. Yep. Y'all told me Chris Brown and his homies beat the fuck out of Usher. He was bloodied and bruised. He walked back after the fight, and everyone could tell that he just got beat up. And then the next day, I see this man clear and fine, not a bruise in sight. Why don't y'all stay out of people's business for a second? That'd be nice. Half of y'all don't know how to mind yours. Then the other half of y'all got this eternal hard on for Chris Brown that you'll never let go. Just leave the man the fuck alone. Let him self-destruct. If y'all think he's that toxic, you won't have to do anything to usher that man into where that, that type of life will lead you. How about you just mind your fucking business? You're not his parole officer. You are not his loved one. You don't even care for the man. Why do you keep feeding yourself content from that individual? Why do you track this man's life down to the very moment he's engaged in some type of altercation with another grown ass man so that you can get on the internet and say that he's toxic and abusive? For fighting another man? I get into a car with a woman going 80 miles per hour on the freeway, she puts her nail in my eye, right? If I happen to put my hands on that woman, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a P word, I'm a punk, and I'm irredeemable from here until the end of time. But if I have a dispute with another grown ass man and we come to blows, I'm still abusive. You people make up the rules as you go and you are always the toughest on the people that you don't like. I gotta give an L to the media because it just seems like somebody will throw something out there and then they all and they rush. It. They all and rush they to the headline. It. That thing went from there was a, a phys, there was a, a, a physical altercation at Chris Brown's birthday party to Chris Brown led a a, a, a damn warrior squad against Usher yeah. and he and he was just totally assaulted for no reason because of the fact that they're rushing these headlines out there without verifying with anybody legitimate. They have to then go back and try to find proof of the shit, and then when they don't, situations like this happen where we're just sitting here like, well. Where's the proof that any of that shit happened? There is none. I give an L to Master P. I just saw a clip of him performing. And they started to play Here I Go by Mystical. And Master P decided to say, free Mystical. Fam, we have got to stop saying free everybody just for the fuck of saying free everybody. What is Mystical in jail for again? For the R word. For, for S-A-ing. Oh, multiple no. people. Mystical. Mystical under the jail. You know what I mean? Like, it's happened multiple times. This is a pattern with bro. We're not freeing Mystical. Yeah, yeah, I'm just free everybody. Just free my nigga Pookie. What Pookie do? Shit. He got caught up drive by. He hit like 15 people, you know, a couple kids and a grandma. But, but free my nigga, though. Free Pookie. That's not how that works. All right, my last L is going to, and it's actually an old L that I keep forgetting to put in here. I just thought it was interesting. So Nintendo has had a lawsuit on a guy who basically hacked some of their games and was, like, letting people play all these games for free, like kind of like ROM games or whatever. And mm -hmm. so he's got, like, a bunch of time. I want to say, like, a bunch of years of probation. And he has to pay back this, like, $40 million fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, like, N Nintendo's getting $40 million from him. To the point where, well, like... Okay not. To the point where they don't got $40 million to give them. They're going to take 
25 to 30 percent of his earnings for basically the rest of his life until he it ain't going to amount to 40 million dollars you'll never collect on that debt. he's reportedly That's only making he's reportedly only making 25 dollars in prison right now Damn. And, and they're taking that that is just fucking spiteful. <laughs> it's so spiteful. <laughs> it's just They're spiteful. taking everything. From you me. have no hope of ever collecting on that debt. The man is in prison. Oh I just thought God. that was crazy that Nintendo was that petty about bootlegging petty as hell. Games. That's petty as shit. You know? Like, you already got him in jail. Like, let the rest of this shit go. Two quick dubs. Uh, my first dub is actually from my, my dad. He gave me a... Uh, a couple of students who have gone on to college, one of them, I think, skipped a couple grades to go on to college. One of them has like a 4.9 GPA, which I guess is like AP class. And he has the most scholarships offers of any yeah. American student yeah. in history. Yes, yeah. I've seen that shit. That, 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 shout him out, shout him out. So there's that one, but then there's a girl who had like a 8.3 GPA or some shit. Ooh. I was like, how do you even get that? Like, how does that, how is that even a thing? Like, I understand yeah. a 5.0 GPA scale, but, like, how do you get past that? He nah, keeps saying it's know. college courses, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. That shit's crazy. That shit's to nuts. an 8? I didn't think you could get to, to an 8.0. That's what I'm like, I don't, I don't know. That's that's what the article says, though. So, uh, shout out to Dennis Barnes, a 16-year-old senior, mm -hmm. picks Cornell University after getting over 185 college acceptances. Oof. And then high school valedictorian with an 8.07 GPA overcomes several challenges, including homelessness. And her name is Jasmine <laughs> Mazard Larry. 8.07. I don't. How is that a thing? Somebody got to explain it to me. That's that's nuts. But both of them black. So shout out to them. My last dub is going to Rockstar Games. Because apparently, after making a billion dollars on Grand Theft Auto V, they have put one to two billion dollars into making Grand Theft Auto VI. A billion dollars for a video game? Is that com? Is that a common thing? Is that a common no. price tag for a video game? Jesus Christ! But making a billion dollars on a video game is not very common either. So I mean, it would have to be the the greatest video game of all time. That's why I'm like, what 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 is happening here? I, like I for them know. for them to warrant a billion dollar price tag, I've never seen a billion dollar price tag on a movie. a movie. Yeah. So 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 a billion dollar video game, it better be the best video game of all time. Where of all rank, time. Period. Where would you rank it's, Grand Theft Auto Five? Uh, I mean, it's in my top ten. I don't know if it's the greatest game of all time. So like in between when Grand Theft Auto Five came out and now, it's been how long? Grand Theft Auto V came out in 2013. When does this come out? I don't know. So that's have, weird. This, this, this game is going to have to last this 15 years, dude. Yeah, because that's lasted us I mean, 10 it, years. It took them a decade to make this. This game is going to have to be our Grand Theft Auto for the next 15 years. At yeah. least. Any, anything short of that would have to be considered a failure. If you're yeah. turning around and making a brand new Grand, Grand Theft Auto in the next two to three years, either this video game made more money than any other video game of all in all time, period. The first one right? did. Was, gross. GTA 5 did, so. Or GTA 6 was a a, a stinker. And you need to get people's mind off of that as fast as possible, and you, you needed to course correct. Facts. But man, a billion dollars for a video game? That's bold. That's very, very bold. bold. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what comes of it. I'm, I'm excited to see if it's good or not. Because if it's not... It better be! If it's not, sheesh! One dub, most important dub on my list, Mr. Donald Trump has lost his lawsuit... Uh, for a uh, against a former uh, victim, All right, so he was found guilty um, of of I guess in a in a civil court. Yep. Um, he's been ordered to pay five million dollars to the victim. I believe this is the young lady that he he got he caught on the Epstein Island, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh. I saw her. I saw her deposition. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's either it's either her or it's the the chick the playboy model mm-hmm. he's of course he's got multiple rape all- allegations Which is nuts. Going on. he lost that one at least he's seeing his day in court for them though so sure sure I actually didn't think I'd see him lose any of these, so that's pretty good. I guess a kind of a, a shitty L on the back half of that of, of that dub for Trump losing is that even in spite of losing at court at court decision, for a Trump is demolishing Biden in the polls right now. That is awful. like he's up eight points. That on is Biden. so awful. A convicted fist. Not convicted. Well, I guess can you, you call it convicted if you lose in in civil court? Oh, in civil court, a uh, pro- at least a proven. I don't think you yeah. you win a civil lawsuit for if it, if it wasn't at least proven. So a proven rest is eight points higher than you in the poll. I think that one speaks for itself. All right, let's get on to these L's. Late night television is getting my first L. So we talked in uh, in our Behind the Cape segment a little bit about the writer strike and all of the shows that it was uh, affecting. One of the sectors that's getting hit the hardest is late night television. Yeah. You know, Kimmel. Um, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Jay Leno. Cohen. Jay Lent. Yeah, all those guys. The, the reason why I found it so funny that the late night television shows had to shut down because of the writer strike. I thought all y'all was comedians. That yeah, that is the the I interesting. Thought all were comedians. You can't write your own jokes anymore. Damn, Jimmy Kimmel. Damn, Jimmy Fallon. Seth Meyers. Damn. Uh, um, James Corden's show. That show should have been gone a long time ago, anyway. So like, damn, that show should have been gone when they found out he was a huge douchebag. He's been, that show's been losing money religiously, quarter after quarter. I thought that was funny because these guys were supposed to be comedians, but it's low-key been revealed that none of them write their own jokes. Yeah, I, I like, think none of them. maybe at some level the issue is that they have to write a bunch of jokes for a bunch of different things. But you, at some level, you, you should be able to... or not? You should be able can to you feel, write a set or not? You should be able to feel and something. If you hire the producers, they're going to set up the show... You tell the jokes, and that's how it's supposed to go down. Yeah. Like, damn. Uh, if, if somebody would have told Arsenio Hall that your oh your writers aren't going to be here tonight, they'd have laughed and went on with the damn show. <laughs> if somebody if somebody would have told Drew Carey or Steve Harvey that they wouldn't have no writers in the show, they'd have went on with the damn show. Don't try to convince me that Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel is a fucking comedian. They can't write no damn jokes. Well, for Steve Harvey, all he has to do is get up on stage and go, What yeah. your ass say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, your ass. Oh, I, 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 I mean, I, she was like, she was like, she said, she said, I said, I said the top fruit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She said, oh, hell no. <laughs> That's all he has to do for an hour. No, what he has to get up there is is go up there and tell black women that are only uh or not black women but just women in general that our only purpose is to you know uh, uh bring home money and 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 and, and provide and, and go and wake up in the morning and go do it again. Yikes! Yeah, oh my God. Let's talk about Chili's white boyfriend because he has some he has some interesting things to say. Chili from um, TLC. Yeah. Has a white boyfriend now? Dog, she's dating Matthew Lawrence. What? Yeah. Like Disney Channel, Matthew Lawrence, yeah. That's weird, but okay. Yeah. And, and it's been going on for like a year now, so it's like it's a thing. <laughs> what? It's it's, it's what? a whole thing. Alright. But yeah. Um Chili's white boyfriend gave us some uh gave us some interesting information on a Marvel casting couch. So apparently Matthew was up for a a Marvel role at some point in time. When he came in and he met with a producer, the producer asked him to, you know, strip down naked so they see him just in his underwear. And then he began to kind of come on to him and ask for a little bit more than just an audition, if you know what I mean. Sure. 
Matthew apparently rebuffed and has never been called back by Disney or Marvel ever again. And he's claiming that the casting couch thing was the reason why. And then his brother, Joey, actually doubled up, doubled down and, and, and kind of alluded to some of the same stuff of maybe not of Marvel doing it, but other studios asking them to do certain things to get roles. I find the casting couch thing very interesting. That is because interesting. Yeah, very much so. Number one, it's always interesting when you come out and tell us. I think that's very telling as to when you let us know about it. Also, it makes me look at all the people who are currently working in that studio and be like, I wonder which one of y'all gave up some ass to get y'all roll. <laughs> who gave up some ass? I bet I can pick you out. I can smell it on you. I know which one of y'all gave up the booty to get the roll. And it's just, it's just what it makes me feel like. Which one of y'all really was bent over this producer's couch to get this roll? And some of y'all got husbands and wives and children and, and long story careers. I just can't see any, just anybody walking in that room getting, you know. But then again, there's so many people that come out and tell you that that's really what it is. Like legit. That's, that's what it is. Now, you know, I don't know what Terry Crews got going on because Matthew didn't let old, old boy fill him up. So, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that story gets worse and worse every time I hear another celebrity talk about that kind of stuff. But as, as far as he was concerned, uh, he, he just wasn't down for it. And, and I don't know if anybody else notices, but Matthew Lawrence has never been in the MCU project. So True. Okay. As it stands. A couple things. Uh -huh. First of all, I looked it up. Matthew is the middle one. Yeah. That makes the whole chili thing even weirder because, like, I always felt like the middle one was, like, the the weird, like, not weird one, but, like, Joey was, like, the, the heartthrob, and then the young yeah, one. Yeah, he was the, the, the super popular one because he came out first. He popped out first. Yeah, and then the younger then, one um, was the cute kid, and the middle one's just, like, this this guy along for the ride. He was on Boy Meets World. He was Boy Meets World, yeah, yeah. He was on Boy Meets I, I, World. And, I knew I knew Matthew Lawrence more than I knew the, the youngest Lawrence. The youngest Lawrence was on all of those Disney Channel movies. But all of the Disney Channel movies was starring his brothers also. So it was, yeah, it was just like, yeah, you only getting validated because Joey and Matt are here. And I already know them from stuff. And then and, and Boy Meets but World and But I feel like the, the kid put in, maybe the two of them, the kid and Joey, put in the most work, I feel like. Cause then the kid was like T.J. Detweiler from Recess, and he was he was a, a whole bunch of other things too. So it was just like Damn, the middle one got. Chilled I feel from I TLC, feel so I feel weird about he won. that. Situation. He, he won. He won. Okay. He got TLC. He got he got Chili from TLC. He won. He has Usher's sloppy seconds. Sure. Anyway, the other thing I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's been other people after Usher. Sure. Sure. I I would hope. It's been like 20 years since Usher, but anyway. Yeah, I would hope so too. <laughs> uh, on top of that, so the whole Marvel thing, right? There's been a whole MCU revolution going on, but there's one character that got to ascend as a male. I'm just wondering maybe if he was one of those guys, considering this is, we're talking about a guy who had to give up the buns to get a, to get a role, right? So yeah, obviously, yeah. And that, that was kind of their point of bringing it up is because when they, when, the, they were saying the one thing that, well, not the one thing, but something that got left out of the conversation in Me Too is that this is something that a lot of male actors experience as well. A mm -hmm. lot of them don't come forward and talk about it. Um, but it is, it, it, it seems like he was trying to convince us that it's every bit as prevalent with the males as it is with the women. Oh, yeah. Which is, which, which is, that would, I mean, even I would kind of have, I find that hard to believe just because of the, the male ego and what that would entail. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it has a much higher chance of becoming explosive if you are constantly going after mail. But then again, I've never been on a casting couch. I've never been on a sure. casting call. So, uh, you know, my 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 expertise is is nil. I just hope a certain you, you saying there's another guy who who are you who are you talking I about? I just hope a certain actor isn't out here striking vipers with anybody. Damn, I'm lost. It's cool. You'll see his movie coming up pretty soon in 2024. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just hope that. You know. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, say it ain't so, Clarence. Uh, uh, you know? Say it ain't so. I, I hope not. I'm just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> he ascended quite a bit, pretty quickly. I just... Oh, boy. It's a bird on the casting call on the couch. <laughs> um, all right. This one's a little bit more complicated. I'm not sure why I feel so off about it. So I'll, I'll attempt to explain why I gave this person an L. So I'm giving an L to the brat. And I don't know, man. I just I find something very odd about the information that they gave us. So obviously, the brat is, uh, you know, she's a lesbian. Mm -hmm. She has a significant other, I believe a wife. And they are now having, they're in the process of having a child that the bride is carrying. Mm -hmm. They found it necessary to reveal to the public that the semen donor that they used was not of a black person, but instead of a Caucasian male. It, it just confuses me for so many reasons. Let, 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 me, let me be very clear. It is not the 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 suggestion of creating a um, you know a, a biracial baby that offends me about this or, or, or even makes me kind of squeamish. It is the fact that you would specifically seek out Caucasian DNA to weave and birth your baby, like specifically when your partner is not. If you had a white wife and you wanted a baby that reflected you and your partner and y'all decided to go with a white donor so y'all could have a mixed race baby, certainly, you know, that comes with its own complications, but that's somewhat understandable. Yeah. But for two black women to specifically seek out white DNA to impregnate themselves with, sits with me wrong like first of all what exactly are you doing to the child like and, and, and this is legit like i i don't think that i've ever met a biracial person who at some point in their life and then this is through through having some pretty pretty in-depth conversations with some some of my loved ones on this this exact subject matter I have not met them. I have not met a, a, a person who has that type of makeup that hasn't at least expressed to me the idea of having some sort of crisis about what their true identity is, right? About, okay, I'm, I'm not black enough for this side, but I'm too white for this side, or I'm not white enough, or I'm too white for this side. It is like this constant tug of war between conflicting cultures and ideals that you stick a child in the middle of and they're forced to deal with pretty much for the rest of their life. Now, sure, that that's a part of, of uh, an, any number of people's lives and it's become somewhat natural. But then again, none of those parents or, 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 or creators of that child in that situation really had any control over it. They fell in love. They had a child. It was what it was. You fell in love with a black woman. You married a black woman. You chose to have a baby with a black woman. Why is it important for you for the baby to be half white? Especially when it doesn't do anything for the child, but confuse things even I, I, further. Like, confuse them. I have two black mothers, but when you decided to have me, you decided to give me... You know, this other half of my identity that I'll never know, that I'll never, not not just not know, right? Because that can happen with somebody who's just naturally born of a, an interracial relationship. But specifically, not know. It's a sperm donor. They'll never, they'll never interact with this person more than likely. It'll be a part of who they are. And it'll be something that is... Not something that you can walk them through or help them with or explain to them or, or even help them identify with in any real way. It'll be this hole, it feels like. It'll never really kind of be summed up in any real way. But 
you know, you wanted a biracial baby, so it worked for you. That just it, it seems selfish. It seems very superficial. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 even goes beyond that for me because again, you didn't choose to have an Asian donor. You didn't choose to have a a a, a you know a there Middle Eastern uh, you know South American. You chose specifically white sperm. I don't understand it. Why was it so important for you to have a biracial half white baby with I, your black partner? I can see if they were going for a child that maybe has more, like even on some ignorant shit. Like if they were like, oh, we will like hopefully be light skin or some yeah, shit like or that. Yeah, something like that. But it's like your child is but clearly going to have black a features. black donor who has light skin. I don't. Yeah, even if it was some like on some hair texture, eye color, skin color type of thing. Like I kind of hope that this baby turns out all of that white facing or some shit like that. Like, yeah, like your that child's gonna have black features. The technology to, to to predict those kind of things has gone way up over the last several decades. There's no reason to go that far, even if that's what you were going for, which is still trash, by the way. Yes, I, I don't get it. It, it. it makes it's very. It's unsettling. It's weird. Very Don't weird. get it. Last L I got is going out to former Ohio State quarterback, Mr. C.J. Stroud. First of all, we're going to need to re- rename the shop. And we might as well just start calling it Tear Session. This is a safe place for you to come here and cry. Haven't seen the episode yet, so... <sighs> oh, I'm sure it'll make you very happy. Not really. Um, so apparently, you know, he goes on and he's talking about facing adversity at Ohio State and uh, a specific instance in 2021 when uh, the number one college football player in the country at that time, Quentin Ewers, decides to reclassify for the 2021 class and enroll at Ohio State. CJ Stroud got his panties is so big of a bunch that he felt disrespected by Ohio State taking on Quentin Ewers. Now, let, let's let's put all of this into context as to when all of this happened. It was such a shock because this man committed to Ohio State after reclassifying over the summer. Spring had already gone by. So you're talking about a true freshman early enrollee who's coming to college a year early. And CJ Stroud is so bent out of shape that 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 he feels disrespected by the fact that the kid's even there. Been in the program two years, already named the starter. I can't imagine that Ryan Day said that there was going to be an open competition. With, with fucking Quentin Ewers and C.J. Stroud. What reason would he have to do that? He has a guy who's been in this program for two years and that he's already named the starter and been building the whole C- offense around. And then here's the kid who's coming to college early and just wants to get in at Ohio State who came in late. What real competition could there actually have been? Oh, but C.J. Stroud felt threatened and, 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 uh, and disrespected. What's funny to me is that not only do I have that sweet nugget of, of insecurity, but then on top of that, some of what he's saying is actual bullshit. So he tells Maverick Carter, oh, well, Ohio State told me that Tate was coming the day before he showed up. Really? According to Menace to Sports' Zach Smith, he was talking to Ryan Day at some charity event the day they got announced that Quentin Ewers was reclassifying and looking to come to Ohio State, apparently Zach Smith was at a, an event with Ryan Day. We asked him about it when the news hit, and guess who calls him right while they're in the middle of that conversation and asks him about it as well? CJ Stroud. So not only are you butt hurt, but you're capping to make everybody get on the butt hurt train with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. Before you even said that last little tidbit, it seemed like okay, I'm about to go on the show. I gotta have like a story. Let me just let me just come up with something real quick. 
and I'm I'm mad at, at I'm not really mad at Maverick Carter because he's not a football guy, so I'm not expecting him to like ask any follow up questions. But like I'm like, damn, really? So I know it was a couple weeks in between you were reclassifying him actually showing up at Ohio State's campus. You're saying the first time you ever heard of him coming to Ohio State was the day before he got to campus? That was the first time anyone said anything to you about him coming there? So you didn't even know he was arriving until the day before he got there, huh? Really? Really? Because I find that to be horseshit. I think you were ass hurt the minute that anybody anywhere suggested that he might come to Ohio State, that your coach didn't get out there and say, no, we have our quarterback. We, we don't need Quinn Ewers. You hadn't thrown a down yet in a meaningful game. You hadn't played a down. Now, that doesn't mean that he was going to let him take your spot. That just means, like, first of all, who are you to think that you're owed anything? You haven't done anything here, CJ. Offended by what? You ain't did shit. You don't have an accolade to your name here. What do you think you're owed? Especially when they put in Kyle McCord, like, Two games later, after the first game, buddy, uh, buddy, what are you talking are you, about? Were you not also disrespected by them putting in Kyle McCord? Like, uh, okay, Houston, I guess y'all got y'all one. Good luck with that. Well, okay, yeah, he was probably capping it about seems that. To be a little thin. Uh, he was probably capping about that, but I at least cap from time to time. I, it, I was about to say it's not. Is this isn't the only thing? It was the. Oh, losing to Michigan doesn't define my time at Ohio State. Uh, nigga, if that don't define it, what does? It's, what do you have to your name other than individual accolades okay. at, at your time at Ohio State that says otherwise? Is it, he, 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 he gives these takes that I, don't know that, I think anyone I think, using common sense knows that that's not what people want to hear from you. Okay, yeah, now, that's true. I, I don't necessarily want to hear that from him, but I... I don't think that those would necessarily define him. It might define him when we speak of the rivalry for sure, but... To to Buckeye fans, I feel like if you left this school after the run that they've been on, if you left this school never having a Big Ten championship, never beating Michigan, that is your your legacy. It is. Like, we can can say as many nice things about C.J. Stroud as we want to. If you don't have either one of those things... It just is what it is, bro. You're never going to get away from that. Anytime somebody brings you up, they're going to say, ah, buddy never beat Michigan. Ah, buddy never won the Big Ten. I see that as a stain for sure. That's that's a permanent stain you got to wear. Defines oh. him. What is the bigger accolade on the other side that makes that seem smaller or that kind of makes that go away? He didn't actually win a Heisman. He didn't actually sure. win a playoff game. He played great in one, but he didn't win. Sure. He didn't win a national championship. So if he'd have done any of those three things, you could legitimately say, all right, well, but he won a Heisman. Uh, right. Well, but he did beat, you know, the number one seed in the playoff. Uh, but he did win a national championship. None of those things happened. And probably they didn't happen because you didn't beat Michigan or win the Big Ten. You're, you're not wrong with any of that. I just feel like maybe a combination of those things – defines him maybe a little bit more than his losses at Michigan, but maybe not. It it, it really just depends on who you're talking to. Uh, I mean, I guess. I guess. Uh, last one, I got a toss-up. Um, there was a bit of an update from the major Jonathan Majors trial. So, according to AP News, the district attorney has adjusted the charges for Jonathan Majors to now fit... A new description given by the the witness being that the young lady who, who all this is over, Jonathan Majors' old girlfriend, uh, instead of the cop who originally was driving all this in the beginning. So it kind of tells me that that right there initially. It tells me that maybe they realize they have an issue with this whole, you know, the initial lead up to this to the to this charge right the the initial investigation by the cop on scene apparently there is a part in the in the body cam footage where Jonathan Majors is trying to explain to the cop where he gets hit and the cop taunts him 
as, as as if to say, as if to be the most cliche police officer you could possibly be when faced with a domestic dispute where the male is claiming that he was assaulted first. What's the most cliche thing you could do? Dude, come on. <laughs> come on, man. Look at you. That little girl over there hit you. Come on. You got to be fucking kidding me, guy. Right? Because yeah. that's most people's attitude, even outside of being a police officer. A girl hit you? What do you mean? You're a man. You're a man. Who cares if a girl hits you? That's the expectation. Already a rough start. Yeah, and that's literally what this this everything is based off of was the the initial rundown, getting the information, what happened. Now, what I read later on in the article was a description of what is being accused now. Apparently, she's claiming that Jonathan Major has twisted her finger, also twisted her arm behind her back, struck her behind her ear. Then shoved her in a manner that made her fall backwards into the vehicle. Now, if you're confused on how all of those things happened in succession and then ended up with her on her back in a car, I'm just like you. Sure. I'm just like you. We couldn't even figure I, it out I, before I, recording. I'm just like you. And again, if that very specific set of circumstances happened the way that she said it happened, we will see it. I would guess within the first 30 seconds of the video from the from the cab. The very first thing we should see is Jonathan Major shoving her into a cab. Maybe even catching the punch behind the ear that she claimed happened. And said driver should be able to corroborate that story as well. Should be able to corroborate that, right? And he probably so now, shouldn't have let her in the car if all that was happening. At all. I wouldn't even let them in my car. There's <laughs> Neither no fucking way in there. hell I would ever. So this dude then ran up, threw a white woman against my car, and then punched her inside of the seat. I'm parking the car and calling the cops immediately. <laughs> it's like, there's no way. Are you getting me mixed up into all of this nonsense? No, hell no. Hey, uh, nah, y'all gotta go. I gotta go. You gotta go. Bounce. There's no way I'm letting that mess in my car. But that that's neither here nor there. Jonathan Major's attorney is maintaining that they have additional evidence that they're that they're looking to bring forth that shows that the victim was lying. Um, but they're now even afraid to give that to them and seeing how they've handled all of the evidence they've given them so far. Because now it feels like they're grasping at straws trying to hold this case together. Because they don't have everything that they thought they did. At least that's that's what's being characterized. Now, we haven't gotten any comments from the DA's office in the AP article. Um, the only thing we've gotten, we didn't even really get what the charge is, what it's been reduced to or changed to. You know, we know we had something about strangulation on there. We know we had assault and battery. So whatever the adjusted charges is, is now supposed to be more reflecting that of what the girl said as opposed to what the cop reported initially, which is problematic because the entire arrest was based off of the, the that police officer's investigation. His investigation, when he showed up to the scene and responded to a 911 call that Jonathan Majors made. Let me ask a quick question. So during that last part, you mentioned that they were trying to keep information from getting out or evidence from getting out because of how things have been twisted a little bit. But don't both because sides they, get... they were expecting, or it sounds like what the lawyer is trying to say is that when we brought the evidence that we already have now, we were expecting them to throw this out. Mm -hmm. And now we have even more evidence than we had to start with. We're afraid... That if we turn it over to the DA right now, you know, before we come back to court, that, you know, they'll find some. Oh, she, what she said specifically is that they'll tip off the uh, the witness to adjust her story again. Oh, yeah. I so, don't, yeah, you can't. That you can't. So, I was going to say, they should both have discovery, which means they both have. have so what she's, what she's saying is initially... The first story was I got punched, I got choked, right? And we had a fight. Then it turns into, well, he did, he twisted my arm and threw me in a car. Is what we're saying now, yeah. which is not exactly strangulation and assault and battery. 
right? Like we're going to have to see that, you know, to to kind of get us to there. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's saying now that they've adjusted the witness statement again as to what happened. She's saying if I bring forth this additional evidence that we've gotten, because you know they they released the photos. Uh, of her in the club, you know, messing with her hand, taking drinks, playing with her hair, doing a whole bunch of stuff that maybe you wouldn't be able to do with your right hand after it was broken. Um, and with no visible marks or abrasions on her face or head that we could see from the video. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're saying if we tell them what additional evidence we have right now, they're just going to fix her statement again to make it fit what we what we're showing you. But what we're showing you is that this woman told you that she was badly beaten, right? Initially, and then she went out clubbing. She told you that her finger was broken from an altercation that she had with Jonathan Majors, and yet she's fine holding a glass. She's fine scrolling through her phone. She can play in her hair. She can carry things. She can search for things through her purse. Not very common things that you usually do when you have a broken finger. You would at least favor Let alone be out of the club at all. After being strangled and beaten earlier that day. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. We've got more to come. I think the next date is going to be on the 13th, June June 13th. 13th. Yep, yep, yep. He did not have to plead today. I think this was just a preliminary hearing, so... We we shall see, man. I have very very little faith in our uh, in, in our police officers. I have even less faith in our in our criminal justice system. So, I I, I am trying to remain as um, as impartial and as fair as I possibly can be. But a lot of this stuff stinks to high hell, man. Whenever you start talking about recanting statements and 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 reconfiguring charges it just sounds like you're already too deep into the hole to reverse course and now we need to save face with with what little we can grasp to and when we're talking about taking somebody's life away from them taking somebody's livelihood away from them which is what's happening in jonathan majors right now that's too much of a cost to be trying to save face for your own job but that is the last I got on my list. Bet. Give us your thoughts on our dubs and L's. Give us your dubs and L's as well in the comment prompt below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Come back every Wednesday for another dubs and L's episode. Absolutely. And make sure you check out our previous dubs and L's where we discussed Raven from That's So Raven being an absolute star during her time on That's So Raven, amongst other things. And make sure you subscribe. Like you said, we like to do this every Wednesday at 10 o'clock.